Hit it from the back with my knee brace on The Velcro park, keep catching the thong What up world, special reverb Chilling with Hannibal, Hannibal Burris AKA SU Tune yeah, yeah. To my understanding Yeah man Man, you doing this music thing now Like hard and I'm digging everything Thank you man, appreciate it well, When did this start as far as you just rapping? You always been doing that? I recorded music before I did comedy Actually, I played sax in, in grade school and and just now for the past couple of years really, really dove in and I'm producing a little bit also. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to now just talk about these beats too. I like my beats. Yeah. <laughs> what are you using to make beats? I got a Moog Voyager XL for some stuff and I use some iPad apps. Mm. So some, some the Moog app, you know, you can make drums out of anything. I was in a hotel in London and the, and the bathroom had a weird sound that it made that it slid. And I was like, oh, let me get that. I haven't used it for nothing yet, but I got it just in case, you know, if I want to pull something. I just got this MIDI thing that we're going to mess with in the show, but it's wearable MIDI. And it's nice to just feel that on stage. And sort so of like just wirelessly. Uh, uh, <laughs> and you can kind of cue songs and whatnot. I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying her name wrong. Emoji a heap. But she made these gloves, the Mimu gloves. I think they sold out, but I, I went on a waiting list for them. They are better, like kind of a more advanced version of this. But for now, this is this, to be able to do like that and, and hear a sound or cute. It, it feels it feel fun. It feels like it's, it's really exciting to. I don't think I can have a bad show with these on my right. wrist because I'm going to enjoy myself, which, which in turn make the audience enjoy themselves. That's crazy. That actually makes me think back. Like, you used to be into the theremin. You still yeah. playing the theremin? Nah, man, growing up now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be chained to have to have my hands around. I want to be able to move out <laughs> into the crowd with their double wrist, get some, you know, once I get advanced with it, by this time next year or something, I'll have, I'll have two on the wrist, two on the, ad, on the ankle, and then just be like, just moving through the crowd like that <laughs> as the symphony plays or some shit, hopefully. Man, tell me about the band you got. I always, I like performing with a band. It just adds so much to the music. And then it gives me, not to say that there isn't a reason to perform, but it makes you have to step it up, especially if you got world-class musicians. Cause if not, they're thinking, why are we playing for this motherfucker? Yeah. Cause usually they probably played for somebody really dope in the past before <laughs> the folks that get recommended to me are fine. So uh, for me, I think it brings up my energy, the crowd energy. Man, so tell me about the recording process, man. Are you recording strictly in the studio or same as with the iPad? Are you kind of recording everywhere? So I like the studio. I like the space of being in the studio. I got my own studio at the crib, so get comfortable there. But I record all over and I love it, man. I just, you know, a lot. Some, some of my tracks just come from like freestyling for 30 minutes and then picking out the spots. Like, oh, that's the flow right there take that and then build off of that. So a few songs kept about three. I literally talk about the process in the hook. I rapped for 14 minutes on this beat, then I kept three. But at first I was sending everybody that 14 minute freestyle because I was really excited about it. <laughs> but it was in November, 2020, which was a perfect time to send people 14 minute freestyles because yeah. nobody was going anywhere. So they listened to it. Yeah, so some of those is from, you know, starting from long freestyles and then revisiting them and being like, okay, I should structure this like an actual song. I've just recently gotten more into strong song structure. <laughs> into intros and, and, and you know, hooks and, and whatnot. Knee Brace, the new single, was very hook heavy. Yeah, hooks are still, you know, important. Hooks, he was just like, let me, and also it was like the hook, Somebody, uh, Cypher sounds like put the hook at the beginning so it get people right away. And then I started like listening, you know, 50 Cent off of that to get rich or die trying. Yeah. His school of writing of, you know, starting the hook right away or having, or intro or just, you know, there's a, there's a structure and a formula to it that you, that, you know, to follow. What are some other rappers that sort of basically inspire you or you at least? look up to in terms of like songwriting, lyrics, whatever. Big fan of Fonte. Fonte is really great because he's at ease while he's doing it, but he's super skilled, but it doesn't sound like he's trying that hard. Serengeti, just because he's so prolific and 
try so much stuff. You're not afraid to try. So you try different styles and embodies different characters and builds a world. Open Mike Eagle and, and how he operates and, you know, a lot of producers too. I listen to a lot of instrumentals and just different. So Kiefer, who produced, kept about three, a lot of his beats do that to me where they make me write a lot to them. Well, I'm like, let me write it now. Okay, I got more. I got, oh, I want to keep on freestyling to this. There's some beats like that that you can listen to over and over and over. And, and, and most of the beats on the, I just think stuff that I could repeat, you know, and, and just really enjoy. That's what's up, man. That's actually was going to be my next question. What are some, like, basically the beats that you're sort of into? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously I'm hearing on the singles and whatnot, the beats that really get you going in, in song mode. But yeah. aside from that, like, it seems like you got a lot of other um, you know, inspiration sonically. It's all low. It's I like a lot of footwork music from Chicago, so I think that's the music that represents what's going on in my brain on a day to day. <laughs> it was chaos. So I was and so when I hear some of those beats, the way they're made, it doesn't feel chaotic. It's just like if it's made right, it can still be busy, but calming. So a lot of footwork stuff. So. We didn't quite get to the footwork sound on, uh, but I was at the airport. It's, it's, it's leaning more drum and bass, but it, it has that intensity to it where you have to kind of feel it. You have to make a decision. Do I fuck with this or do I don't? Right. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those. It just got the sample and the doom, doom. It, it has that that energy. We started moving that to the beginning of the set too, and just to hit people in the face and like, hey. Okay, yeah, I'm not, because I was opening for Mark Rivelay, so it was like, let me just yeah. play and do up, uh, and let, let me just bring it right away, bring the energy, boom. And so it kind of is a way to establish, I like that that vibe of it. How was that hanging with Mark? Did y'all whip up something? We didn't cook up nothing, but the, he is dope to see just the intensity he brings to his shows. And just energy and commitment and how his audience, you know, he got an audience 4,000, 5,000 cap venues, people just wearing robes, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> you know? But it's and, great. And rocking out. So uh, it was cool that he, you know, I was able to do music in, in that setting and come through as an opening act. Mm -hmm. And which was fun to be in that that vibe and go on first and, and surprise people. I think a lot of people didn't even know it was me at first or. Yeah, I'm sure people are still surprised. With yeah, like they still, the, the it's transition. still, a, it's like, a, it's a, it's a conversion period where people, it, it's an awareness period and a conversion period. A lot of people, oh, I didn't even know you were doing that. I gotta say, you're definitely doing a great job at striking the exact balance between still interjecting your comedy yeah. and your rap with such confidence, man. Like, it's, it's definitely noticed by pure rap fans like myself. Thanks, man. Yeah. Particularly like, you know, one three pocket, just like how it's a song about bowling, like no double yeah. entendres. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just really, uh, yeah, it's a bowling track. I enjoy bowling, you know what I mean? And it's, I, it's not really, I understand why people would think that it's funny, but it's not made in a humorous fashion. And you're good at bowling. Yeah, like, I've I'm seen pretty you solid bowl, at bowling. Yeah. Yeah, but One Three Pocket is just like, One Three Pocket actually comes from the end of the Kept About Three freestyle. There was a part at the end where I was like, yeah, da da da, the straight ball is me, hit the One Three Pocket and the shit lately. Bizzle out here with a strike so cold and I've been bowling since I was like seven years old. Yeah, I'm rapping about bowling, I don't give a motherfucker. You hear the fucking swag, yeah, it's real motherfucker. And I watched back, I, I was filming myself in that session. I look back at the footage and I was really, you know, you see you, you, sometimes you rap it and then sometimes your whole body get into it. My body got into it during that part. And I was like, all right. Then. And then months later, decided to rework it and um, worked on the beat in New York and, and kind of made it fast and was super hyped about it. It was like that, that feeling. When you make a beat and rap over something and then working with a band, see how they interpret something. That, that I produced and, and seeing it elevated like that is always, is a, is a big joy. Yeah, man, that's yeah. what's up. What's some, uh, what's some gear out there that you've been eyeballing trying to add to the studio? It's one, it's something missing from, I had a, uh, the mother drummer or something like the little modular synth mm -hmm. that I built at uh, Mofest. Mofest. Yep. 
That's just missing. I hadn't used it for a minute, and I just was looking around the studio the other day, and it's just gone. Dang, I hope nobody sold it on Reverb, because we we had a, uh, was it the brother from a, from a mother? Yeah. Yeah. Out of where? Uh, I, I can't tell you, but. You should just... hopefully, hopefully it wasn't out of Cali. <laughs> I heard you just sold something on Reverb, and you kind of regret selling. I didn't, well, it was about a couple years ago, because I, I bought my studio, and then it, it, it had a, it had like a, a big analog board. And at the time, I was thinking, man, I'm just rapping. We don't need this shit. Get this <laughs> big ass old guy board out of here. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck do I look like? Rick Rubin or something? <laughs> we put it up on Reverb. We was getting multiple offers on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of know now that the fry probably should have been more patient. <laughs> it just seemed like it was taking up space at the time. It was big, but now that I know a little bit more about studios and, and, and music production and whatever, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have seen. But I just wasn't operating at that time. I wasn't even doing music full time. At that time, it was just kind of part-time rapping a little bit and, and still doing a lot of comedy stuff. So I want to get me a, a, a electronic wind instrument because I used to play sax in grade school and I've been thinking about picking up the sax, but I think it might be more effective to get a one of those, like the the, electric, the ooey, yeah. uh, one of those, those Rollins or something, or uh, the Yamaha one of those that you can get different, all the different horn sounds and whatnot out of. That'll be my next, that's my next purchase, definitely. I'll get that. Yeah, people uh, people say good things about the Yamaha one. Yeah. And the, and the Ui one too. Yeah. The Ui one looks kind of, I don't know, looks kind of weird too. Yeah. I think the Yamaha one is the one that they, the fingers, they made it kind of emulate a saxophone a little bit, like it's close to it. And even just seeing it, it made me realize I could kind of, I thought I forgot how to read music, uh -huh. but even just doing like this kicked back into my brain. I, was like, I started remembering little stuff like, okay, first two fingers is B, no, first two fingers is A, uh, one f first finger is B, and then three is E. Like I started remembering uh, playing a little bit, so it'll be exciting to pick it back up. It can get pretty wild if you get that Yamaha MIDI sax with the MIDI, with the wearable MIDI, Man. sort of. My Get show, my show in a year or two years is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna fuck up Pitchfork or Yala or Lala, whichever, whichever one, both of them probably. We ready for yeah. it, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to for talk show, to man. me, man. Yeah. I'm Fest, that's Hannibal. Yeah. This is Reverb by this man, a midi sax. Yeah. <laughs> I got my new shit. So, yeah.